Hey, doing this is Sean McVay with Sean's Outdoor Adventures, and I want to welcome you to this episode of my series of the Map Reading Challenge. In this episode, we're going to be focused on Jason Farmer, Lewis Brennan, and myself. And I'm going to start with me here. Going into this hunt, I had a little something happen that threw me off my game a little bit. I had a superficial fracture or splinter on the bottom limb of my bow. I talked to the manufacturer and they said, you know, it's, it's probably not going to hurt the bow to shoot it that way because it's mainly just the camo that's, that's peeling off. But they said, just wait, we'll send you new limbs. So I put that bow on the hook and I got my backup bow down, but I wasn't, it wasn't tuned up or sighted in yet. So I had about a day to get that thing ready. Going into the hunt, so I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, trying to regain confidence with a bow that I hadn't been shooting all summer long. And then we, we had a real hot spell, and then we were going into some really good weather for hunting, so my excitement started to come back. Let's check in with Jason to hear what the report's gonna be, and then we'll just roll right into Lewis and see what, what's up with him. Jason Farmer, welcome back to Maryland. Tell me what you're thinking, tell me what you're feeling right now. Uh, this weather has got me really excited, number one. Yesterday it was 91 degrees as a high. Today it's only gonna be low 70s. It's overcast, it's cool, and I gotta imagine the deer are gonna be on their feet. Uh, so what's your game plan for tonight? We're gonna be hitting the tree stand. What do you think's gonna happen? What are you gonna do? What's going on? Talk well, to me here. I'm just gonna go to, to uh, my first spot that I initially scouted. Um, it's below a hay field that's on private property, but uh, I'm about maybe a hundred yards away from it. So I'm just, I'm really hoping that I, I could catch them uh, going to feed in the evening. I guess we're going to see what happens. Good luck to you, Jason. Thanks so much for coming out. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Can't wait. I hear Mr. Lewis. GoPro in action. What's up? What's up, man? Welcome. Long time no see. Welcome to the new and improved base camp. Is this Sean out, Sean's Outdoor Adventures base camp? Yes, it is. Oh, it looks awesome. Dude, you can just just sit yourself right here and set up any. Look Does at all Jason this. snore? Uh, Do you snore, Jason? All right, I'm going to be near you then. Lewis Brennan, welcome to base camp. Oh, so happy to be here. Um, this weather is amazing. We got to hurry up and get through these interviews so we can get in the stand. But hey, tell me what's on your mind. What are you thinking, man? What's going on? I have um, somewhere around three to four spots, solid spots picked out. The first one tonight is kind of coming up to like a clearing area where it's kind of a clear cut in a way. That's going to be my go to. Definitely want to knock something down early the first day just to get it out of the way, get all the nerves out. And then the other spots that I have picked out is hopefully just going to be buck hunting. But if a, if a buck shows up tonight early, I'm, I'm going to drop him too. But the spot I have, I have a lot of confidence. The first three spots I have a lot of confidence in too. It's just, uh, just a matter of getting out in the woods and rolling with it. So with this great turn in the weather, we scrambled to get out in the stands as early as possible because those deer could get up moving at any point in, in, in time because the high was 75, it was a high of 90 the day before, phew, those deer could get up and move. So early in the afternoon, I heard movement and started texting the guys like, I, I think I hear a deer moving just feeding around below me on the hill and eventually this bear popped out. To our surprise, the only other person who saw anything that night was Jason. So let's check up with Jason to see what he was seeing. Somebody's driving around in the hay field in a red pickup truck. I wish I could attract deer like I attract nonsense. <laughs> Whatever that bird is drives me insane. My tent was set up about 25 yards away from Lewis's tent and 
I had earplugs in and I could still hear him snoring at night and it makes me laugh because if you remember when he pulled in, one of the first things he asked was, where's, where's he at and does he snore for Jason? Oh, I'll set up near him. Set up, I mean, look does at all Jason snore? Uh, Do you snore, Jason? And I kind of chuckle because I know from last year that Lewis has a little bit of a snore. So let me just show you a little footage. I ended up getting up early because I was up anyway and I got a little video footage of it. So this is Lewis's tent right here. And my tent's all the way over there. Scouting leads to hunting, Lewis. Scouting leads to hunting. Now it's time to hunt real early. Wind is perfect for your spot oh, this morning. Oh, it's so, gonna be so nice. Got the west northwest. Well, to my dismay, when I got to my spot that morning, the wind was blowing the opposite of what they were predicting and what it had been blowing at while we were at camp. So, you know, my bad luck continued. First, the, the limb of my bow, and now the wind's doing the exact opposite. It's blowing right to where I believe the deer was, were gonna come from. So the best thing about my morning in the tree stand was my Long Island bagel with strawberry cream cheese and the view. I ended up getting down from the stand a little bit early and I started to still hunt through an area where I had never been before just to kind of check it out. There was a clear cover change when I was looking at the aerial photo and this is a little tip for you. I even get questions sometimes, well, what do you do if there's no topography, like if you're in Florida or in the Midwest and it's just flat. I look for, in aerial photos, clear cover changes where you can tell it's real dense and then it lightens up or there was a clear cut at one point. So anyway, there was a real dense patch of woods and then it wasn't as dense looking at the aerial photos. So I wanted to walk the edge of that and just see what kind of you know, deer sign there was. And I, you know, I spent a long time doing that and I was getting close to the road back to where I had come from. I could even just see the tree line breaking up you know, for where the road was. And I, and I look over and there's a deer standing there like 30 yards away so I freeze. I turn on my head, my camera on my hat and I start ranging the deer. It's a doe, she's standing about 30 yards away. And I'm like, okay, I'm really looking for a buck but if this doe steps out from behind that tree and gives me a clear broadside shot, I'll take it. Instead of doing that though, because we both kind of saw each other at the same time, she ended up taking off. And as you see, I drew back and I did that just in case she stopped. Because sometimes deer will run a little bit and stop. And I could tell she was still about the same distance away. But uh, obviously she didn't stop, but she kept going. And from there, I went and checked out another spot and here's a little tip I videoed at the other spot right after I bumped, you know, four deer. I got to this spot based on the topography where I wanted to go look and there were deer already there. And uh, so I started to look for a tree to get set up in. So here's a little tip I want to give you from that. I bumped four doe coming up this spur right here. When you're at a spot and you pick a tree for a tree stand location, like where I was this morning, it was months ago that I was here, and I'm like, okay, this is a good tree. And um, getting set up didn't work out as well as I wanted, because I didn't look at the tree carefully enough. So where I bumped those doe was right around where I'm standing. There's a bunch of oak trees right here. It's a transition zone. It goes from really thick with these little saplings to open woods, and there's all these oaks which means this is an awesome spot. It's a transition zone, not just from topography, but on cover change. But that's not even a tip I wanna get at. I'm gonna use this tree over here as a climber for my climber, but there's some branches I'm gonna to have to like push them around to the backside of the tree once I get up there. But my tip is this, especially if you have anything to take a picture with or you have a video camera, 
take some video footage of the tree you want to get into and then study it when you're at home. So like I said, I was at this place a couple months ago and you know, I looked at so many trees, it got a little bit foggy after a while. So what I would recommend to you is video the tree and explain to yourself what you're thinking, exactly where the spot is so you don't confuse it with another spot. And that will help you when you come back to hunt, whether it's six months later, a year later, a month later, whatever. Having that information will really help you in the long run. Now I'm gonna be quiet, get back to still hunting, and then get out of here so I can maybe come back tomorrow, try hunting this spot. Maybe even this evening, even though I did spook those deer and they were snorting, we'll see. Jason and Lewis didn't have any luck that morning during the hunt, but as you know if you saw the last episode, Andrew harvested himself a nice doe. But now we roll into the next evening hunt, the hunt number three in the map reading challenge. Well, so here I am for the second evening of the map reading challenge. So I decided to switch gears and uh, my, my brilliant plan this time was uh, to come into this draw that leads up to this, uh, not really a farm, but it's just a house, I guess, that has uh, a lot of apple trees planted. And there's some pretty big apples on there. They look good and full, so uh, I gotta imagine the deer are coming in there to eat at night. And uh, some of the trails that are coming through here leading up that way uh, is a pretty good sign. So I'm down in, away from the field, from the apples. It's really thick over on this side. So with this funnel right here, there's actually two come to a point, and the point is right here. There's a nice run that comes up 15 yards from me. I'm hoping to catch them before they go to the apples. I don't know. Time will tell. That evening, Jason set up a trail camera that can actually text you pictures. And if you really read the guidelines for the map reading challenge, I do put in like a 15 point deduction for those types of cameras because, you know, it gives you extra information that other people don't have or maybe don't have access to. And so I was trying to level the playing field a little bit just to keep it all fair. But, but those are really handy and helpful to have, especially in a situation like this and in some situations, very worth the little point deduction because let's check in with Jason and see what he was seeing on his trail camera that he just set up. That ain't no little one. Wow. Tell us what happened. That's high, man. Oi. But who, who are you talking to? Jason. I, I came in on this trail and I was, I wanted to sit there, but it was like, it was such a steep ridge and there's an old logging road there. And I'm like, there was a, there was a trail going down, but I'm like, I don't know if these are people walking this or, or what. Yeah. You know, I'm sure the deer are using it, so I'm like, ah, I'll put a trail camera here. I got a cellular camera. Well, I was on two hours later after my tree, my phone goes off, and I'm like, it's it's my camera. I'm like, what the heck? Could it? And a doe came through, and then right at last light, I mean, he, he That's you a can nice tell he's, looking deer. he's a good size buck. It's high antlers. So, there's one in there. Might be wow. a sad spot. Well, that's good. You going back there tomorrow morning? Yeah. I, All right. The problem is I had two doe underneath me at, at dark, and uh, I tried to leave them go, and I couldn't hear them anymore. I thought maybe they had left, and yes, sure enough, I got get, down. as soon as I get down, <laughs> I'm like, so I don't know if he's, you know, spooked out of there or not. Um, I did actually go way up out of round yeah. where my camera was, where he was last, so I don't think I bumped him. It's just whether or not those does you know, tomorrow. got him hopefully he comes back tomorrow. I blame today on Andrew as far as us not getting deer because as soon as he said let's let's make a competition out of this with the New York crew, I was like, that's it, bad karma right there, or whatever they call that. Um, 
I, every time in my life I make a competition out of something, I always do worse. Yeah, I did my part for the team. Come no, on. it doesn't count. It's antler only. <laughs> oh, is it only antler? Yeah, oh, I said that. I said antler only is. is well, your fault. Scored well because <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to push you guys to you know score on a buck. If you said don't. Only we'd be shooting bucks. Right I know. Now. Well, <laughs> I just didn't want you shooting the first thing to walk by. That was part of it. Well, I'm desperate at this point. I don't care if it has spots. I might jump down on top of it to get it. Yeah, right, right before I climbed down from my tree, this bear ran out in the field. And I'm like, ah, and I know you say don't scare him or don't make noise, but the bear whisper. Get out of like, here, bear. To, I kind of want to make some Get noise. out of here, bear. Get, <laughs> get out of here, get, bear. Get. Come on now, get. <laughs> we learned that last year. I want him to run off, though. You know, I don't want him, like, I don't want to climb down while he's sitting there. Then, you know, I want, I'm like, I want to scare him away. But uh, he, it's funny, he ran out and he knew exactly where I walked and he followed me up and down and he's like, oh, okay. Well, because you have blood on your boots. Yeah. I yeah, told well, you. That's it. I have deer blood I, on my boots. I'm like, I, oh, great. I yeah. told you you were going to attract bears. Didn't I say that before you left? I did say that. Well, our setup tonight, though. Get out of here, bear. We went to, we went to the same three fields. Uh, we picked two where we did the turkey hunt at. I find the first nice tree that looks climbable, and as soon as I get to the base of it, somebody, or somebody, back in turkey season, they had pushed all the leaves out so they could lean up against the back of the tree. Just don't lean too hard against that poster. And face, and face the fear. <laughs> yeah. It'll, It'll be like trap. a mouse trap, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Lewis uh, trap. <laughs> Bam! So, so, I, so I, I went ahead and get in that tree. I'm like, wow, this is actually a... Uh, 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 a, a, I don't know, uh, acorn, yeah. some type of oak tree. Yeah, so, some type of oak tree. I'm like, yeah, and I look and they're all over. Not one of them had <laughs> acorns in it. So I'm like, yeah. oh, well, this is going to be awesome. So, yep, I uh, didn't see anything. Nothing. It's all Andrew's fault. That's because Andrew took his boots off. Yeah, so <laughs> what though? I'm I ready was down window. Burgers. Let's get some food going. Yeah, I got everything ready to roll. With it. The next morning hunt. Lewis had some really bad luck that we're going to talk a little bit about later. So let's go ahead and check in with Jason to see what's going on and if he's encountering anything, especially that nice buck that he got a picture of. Because Jason only got a quick glimpse of the buck on video, I'm going to replay that segment twice in slow motion. All right, Jason is really getting close now. We're all getting excited for him. And I'm very proud of Jason for getting himself on the deer like this. So we're looking into this evening hunt. And I also want to say this, something that Jason had been asking me a lot about before this whole map reading challenge started was how early in the season does Maryland start? Because he's always wanted to shoot a buck in velvet. Whew, that breeze feels nice. It's hot. It's the last sit of the map reading challenge. And that about bums me out. I uh, ended up moving my stand to where I originally was gonna go, where I should have just gone because that buck walked this draw. Same with the does, they were all in here. I'd have been sitting back at camp right now or filming somebody else. <laughs> But, sometimes you gotta go with your first instinct. And I am uh, just bummed that it's over. I, uh, I really hope that he comes back out tonight. I get the feeling it's not gonna be till the very last second of, of light, because it's hot and the sun's blaring. But uh, all you can do is try. I do wanna say, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, to the boys, Sean McVeigh and Lewis and Andrew. I I uh, appreciate you guys uh, bringing me in, and uh, really, I, I enjoyed every second of this. I, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, seeing a real good buck was uh, you know a bonus. 
you know, just the, the time in camp and telling stories and all the text messages and phone goes off all day long. But uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I really appreciate you guys bringing me out. And uh, hopefully we can uh, do this again sometime. Now it's time to kill something. Well, although he wants a buck in velvet, apparently this little buck isn't quite what he was looking for. Well, that's all she wrote. It's kind of depressing. I really felt good about him coming back out here tonight, but instead I had a little four-pointer show up that was still in velvet. Two does. They eventually got my wind and they didn't spook. They just knew something wasn't right, so they mosied off. But So the closest I'm ever going to get to that buck is this pile of that he left for me this morning. Stupid little Oh, that makes me so angry. I just would have sat where I originally was going to sit. <clears throat> Jace, man, thanks so much for joining us on this hunt. I mean, what were, me. well, real quick, what were your thoughts going into this when I, you know, kind of asked you to join us for this hunt? Like, what was your thoughts when, when all that was going on? Well, the first thoughts were just uh, being in the camp with the guys who are passionate about the same thing that I am. So yeah. that was the most appealing thing. It wasn't even so much about how the hunting was going to be. I just wanted to, to come out and experience something with guys who enjoy doing the same thing. As, That's as cool. Me. I know you and I, when we first talked, you've kind of done your own map reading challenges in a sense, going out to Ohio. You looked at maps, you went out there and hunted and stuff, and your, your friends weren't necessarily interested. They kind of thought you were a little bit crazy. So Yeah, I couldn't get anybody to go with me. Yeah, so... <laughs> So I thought it was very fitting that you now have some people that are into that same kind of thing. I mean, what did that mean to you when, you know, to have somebody that actually has a similar interest in doing something like that? To me, I mean, I think it's it's the best part of it. I mean, yeah. you know, coming out and actually killing something, it would just be right. icing on the cake. Right. I mean, so, so let me ask you this. Um, if there's one thing that you can look at this particular trip and say, you know, I learned this on this trip and I'm going to apply it in the future and it's going to help me be more effective. What would that one thing be? Do you have something that kind of stands out in your mind? I, I guess I'd have to say trust your first instinct. Yeah. Um, which it kind of got me this morning. Yeah. Uh, yesterday I was battling back and forth between this spot and that spot across the ridge and I went with my second choice and sure enough uh, this morning that buck walked. And that's one of the things too, I know we were talking earlier and you were like, man, if I just had one more day. And that's one of the hardest things about something what we're doing here, this map reading challenge. We've had minimal scouting. This spot you found isn't even a place you looked at when we were here for the scout. Um, and we've got like two and a half days. I mean, that's really hard folks. And one thing, one thing a lot of people can relate to and they'll find is the more time you get in an area, the more successful you'll be. And so the map reading challenge is an intense challenge. That's what this whole thing does is it pushes you to try to get to that point within two and a half days. So um, I would still consider this trip a success, success as far as the hunting goes. I mean, yeah. to come to an area and just, you know, look at maps the whole time and then go in and hunt it. And put to yourself actually right see, there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was 40 yards, like normally in range. It was just a little too thick for me to get right. a shot. Either way, I mean, I'm really excited that you joined us. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys asking me to come out. Yeah, so thank you, man. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, absolutely not. It's my favorite. We don't. You can you can slap, but we don't have anything that we need to sink. So. I know, but it's fun anyway. Yeah. And action.
Louis Brennan, another map reading challenge down. How are you feeling, brother? Uh, you know, even though I didn't harvest anything, it was still a good time to hang out with everybody as usual. We had a great time. Uh, the bugs were plentiful. The, the bugs were always plentiful, mm -hmm. but you know, it's uh, it's the downside of hunting sometimes. You know, you're, you could be in the right spot, but that doesn't mean the deer are gonna come by. Right, and um, what would you say, like if, as you look back over this map reading challenge, is there one thing that stands out that you could say, I'm gonna do this next time and I think it'll help me be more effective. Is there is there one thing that kind of stands out to you? Not necessarily going in so deep is, is I think is kind of the theme is because a lot of sp uh, spots that I saw deer when I was driving to or from was kind of close to the road and then when I actually sp uh, had two deer come by me um, that were out of range due to some noise on the road, uh, I mean, I was probably 70 yards from the road. I could actually see the road from where I was at. So maybe going as deep as you can to get away from everybody is not maybe the best thing, but. Well, you know, here's a thought for you to take too, is that sometimes that can also burn you, which is what happened to you. We didn't know this was gonna happen, but there was some kind of big race through this public land on the dirt roads. And there was hundreds of people running and mm -hmm all kinds of vehicles cowbells <laughs> and, you know it was a big disaster and so lewis is set up kind of close to the road and that toasted his hunt because um of that so that hey sometimes the deer are near the road but sometimes it's also stuff's going on on the road that could mm -hmm. really mess you up so there's there's two things that you could kind of chew on and um see if you can find a happy medium you know what could be a close spot but maybe that i still won't get messed up by activity on the road but um and that goes for trails and stuff too, yeah. you know. So, well, hey man, it was fun. Thanks, thanks Always so much fun. for joining us, man. Wow, folks. You know what this means, don't you? This means they left the door wide open for the New York group to come in and snatch a victory. All they need is to put one buck down and it's all over. So I am looking forward to putting those episodes together. And I'm gonna start off with the scouting trip because I didn't even get to that yet. So stay tuned for the New York Map Reading Challenge. I hope to see you there. Take care and God bless.